Hi everybody, it's Rose from the Yarn Shop at Alma Park. And today I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about our alpacas. So if you've never been here before, when you come here, the first thing you'll notice is that my yarn store sits in the middle of an alpaca farm. And we have 47 alpacas, four llamas. We used to have a lot more alpacas, but the yarn store kind of took over the business. So, um, you know, that's what we focus on right now. And we do a lot of our own uh, alpaca fiber processing in-house. We make art bats and spin yarn and do all that. But we also send a lot of stuff to the mill um, to have mill spun yarn and roving done. So I wanna show you a little bit about that stuff today so that when you come in, you can see what we do here. So first up, this is a cow. Okay, this is the Quasar Cal, and the design is by Jess, who works here. And I made this in a millspun yarn from our alpaca, Sandy. Um, she's a beautiful, like, medium fawn. We mixed her with 20% merino and 10% golden tussa, and it is just a soft and squishy little, it's beautiful. Um, and it made a beautiful cow. Um, all the links will be in the comments section so you can look up these patterns. Quasar Cal is free on our website as well as Ravelry. Okay, so the next one. This is one of my favorite hat patterns of all time. This is Aspen Hollow by Andrew Mowry. And I've made this hat so many times. I think I've memorized the pattern. I just love it. Um, it is, the, there's brioche, one color brioche in it, so it's soft and squishy. Hey, note, note to you out there, if you're playing a drinking game while watching this video, every time I say soft and squishy, you have to take a shot. Okay, so you'll be drunk in no time. So, um, so this hat pattern is very soft and squishy, and that was made with a DK weight yarn by a little boy named Zeus, and I mixed 20% uh, BFL in with him. So, as you guessed it, soft and squishy. So, um, really, really cool yarn to work with. Another one is one of my favorite designers, um, Hohi Locatelli. Whoops, I dropped it. Hohi Locatelli. Oh my goodness, it's so big. So, let me just fold this. So this is a, an asymmetrical shawl, okay? It's called Pure Joy by Hohi Locatelli. It's fingering weight. There are short rows for those of you who are going to look this up later. If you're afraid of short rows, don't be. It, they're not bad. It's a garter, so you, know, you don't have to worry about it. It's easy. Short rows are easy in garter stitch. And I made this with these two skeins of my fingering weight yarn. This one is from a little boy named Mardi Gras named after my dad, and um, he and there is Merino in here and just Marty. And this is um, made from a couple of different animals. We have a lot of white alpacas because I like to dye yarn and fiber, so we have a lot of white alpacas. Um, so this is from Carly, Kermie, and Brianna. Okay, I made that with that. Here's a this is a little wrinkled because you know it was on a mannequin and it was folded so but this is the castle cow it is my pattern free on my website and ravelry and it is a worsted weight cow and i made that with the marl yarn that we had spun at the mill um called um from excuse me this is donated by cha-cha indian kermi um Indy was born on the 4th of July. Her name is Independence. We call her Indy. And Kermie, Kermie's mother was so fat when she was pregnant with Kermie that we used to call her Miss Piggy. So we wanted to name the baby Kermit, but it was a girl. So we named her Kermie. And Cha-Cha is just a really cute alpaca with tuft ears and she passes her little ear feathers onto all of her babies. But so all of the all of the yarns and fiber that we have done at the mill, we have the name on their label so that you can look them up. 
Um, here is another Hohi pattern hat called Le Petite Boule because there's little baubles on it. Okay, and this is made with a fingering weight yarn. So we have this color of fingering weight yarn um, available. But what I did was I actually spun for that out of roving that was mill processed from a little boy named Sebastian. Okay, he's not a little boy. He's like my top herd sire. So soft and squishy. Um, and uh, this is, uh, you know, most of my roving has a mix of either blue face Leicester or Merino and silk, most of it, because then it is so easy to draft and spin. So if you're a spinner, you will totally appreciate this roving. It is so much fun to spin. And I spun this for this hat. And incidentally, it won first place at Burlington, um, uh, Burlington County Farm Fair two years ago because we haven't had one since COVID started. So let me show you some of my other roving. So we have it in white. And this is from, oh, this is actually beige. This is from Dante. Here is some from Blaze, again, mixed with silk and merino. Here's a mixture of animals to make gray. Um, and this is from Clarissa, Gabriella, Serafina, Winona, and Brady. Um, and you know, you'll see them in the video in a little while, some of them anyway. This is from a little girl named Stella. She's a light fawn. And uh, again, mixed with some silk. We have tons. I just pulled a few of different colors off the rack. We literally have tons of fiber in the store for spinners and felters. And this is Chase, who's actually Sebastian's son, and he's a true black. And we mixed him with a little black merino and some uh, Bombex silk as well. So let me show you one of my favorite projects I did a few years ago. And I really have to hit this with my gleaner because I wore it a lot over the winter and now it's a little pilly. So this is the Harvest Sweater by Tin Can Knits. We did a knit along a few years ago. Okay, I'm just gonna fold it so you can see some of the, the fiber because you could look up the pattern. But, so what I did, this is, if you could see, that's all stockinette there, so you could see the stitch and the colors pretty well. So this is from a little boy named Romeo, who is actually Sebastian's son. So this is his color. He looks just like Sebastian. And um, I took some sari silk and some silk and a little bit of merino and a little bit of sparkle, because I like sparkle, and I spun the whole thing for the sweater. And I just absolutely love it. And you guessed it, it is very soft and squishy. Um, so I love this sweater. Um, so, you know, if you are a spinner, we definitely have enough fiber in the store for you to spin sweater quantities to your heart content. Um, if you're a knitter and you want some hand spun fiber, you know, we are happy to do a commission project with you. Um, and we can add in, I have all the add-ins in the store. I have sparkle, I have silks, I have sorry silks, I have merino, I have all the add-ins in the store. Um, so I could spin anything you want, or if you're a spinner, you can buy all that stuff and make your own stuff, make your own concoction. And um, we also sell brother drum carters and spinning wheels from Louette, but that's another story. So, um, you know, we definitely have enough fiber in the store. Um, we definitely have enough yarn that's mill spun in the store for sweaters or any of your other project ideas. I just showed you a little bit that you can do. And, um, you know, I'm going to now break and introduce you to some of our alpacas outside because it is a beautiful day. And so if you come out with me, you can see what we do here on the farm. Well, at least see the animals and maybe we can take a peek in my garden which is just starting but you'll see that this is a, a working farm um, and uh, you know I love it here and I love dyeing yarn and I love running my yarn store and doing all this stuff so uh, true work of love and uh, if you don't know anything about me from last year's wool walk um, this farm has been in existence since the early 1700s. My house was actually built in 1740. So there's a lot of history here. 
not my history. I've only been here 10 years I'm making my own history, um, but it is a really cool farm. It is a really cool community and uh, I really enjoy it. So, and I hope that shows in my products and the way I interact with my customers. So um, see you at this year's Wool Walk and I hope to see you. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. So take care. Bye-bye. They see me coming. Hey ladies, you want to say hi to the people? These are some of our younger girls and they are kind of witchy. Normally it's always them I'm filming because they always are out in the field grazing. Say hi ladies. These are my alpacas, well some of them. We have 47 alpacas here and four llamas. I'm gonna go see if I could get a couple of others. If you see behind, it's a hay field. That's where we get our hay from. See, and as I was leaving to go into the other field, you see they're all following me, curious as to what I'm doing. They're just such curious little creatures. They're kind of cool. They each have their own personalities. This one standing right in front of me is named Cleo, uh, short for Cleopatra, because her daddy's name is Antony. And the one peeking over her back is Peaches, short for Peaches and Cream. Okay, let's walk into the next field. This is my geriatric pen. These girls are all 23 to 25 years of age, except for the llama. She's about 20, but these girls are old. That's Miss Sapphire. There's Keepsake, looking kind of weird. See how beautiful the grass is in here. Here's Winona. Say hi, Winona. And that grayish black one over there is Serafina. Hi, Serafina. And here's Brandy Llama, the bestest llama in the world. Say hi, Brandy. She's like, nope, I'm out of here. You got a phone. Don't want to be bothered with you. Say hi, Brandy. So here I am in the pen, right outside the pen. We have these hay feeders in every field um, where we put our hay and you know there was fresh hay we give fresh hay at night and of course they're chomping away that's Tony he's a bay black these are some uh, these are some of the younger boys on the farm here's my buddy Dante say hi Dante Tony's looking at the camera like what are you doing you're not gonna shoot me with that are you that little guy right there, the brown, is Blaze. Who else wants to say hi? And on the pen next to these guys, you can see Sebastian being a lazy boy laying down eating hay. And let's look over the fence here. Who's there? That's Mardi Gras and Jimmy Mac at the hay feeder. And there's Snowball standing, the big white boy. So this is where our yarn and roving comes from, all these guys. So you might've recognized some names. This is all they do. They eat, they poop, 
They hang out, they graze, they make me laugh. They're very comical. So now I'm gonna go into a field that we used to use for grazing, but since our herd is smaller, we don't really need it anymore. So we've made a huge garden. We're gonna be putting up a hoop house, greenhouse back behind this next year. Some blueberry bushes over there and see what I get to see while I'm gardening. I don't know if you could see the alpacas standing out there. Yeah, you can, they're kind of far away because they're in the back, but you see all those little white and black dots. There's some of our alpacas. And, uh, but you know, this is what I do when I'm not dyeing yarn. There's some of my garlic, which gets planted in the fall. So of course it's up and looking lovely. Here's some radishes, which come up early, early, early. They just went in um, like a week and a half ago and they're already up. And I have a variety that supposedly will be ready to harvest in 18 days. So we'll see some potatoes and I won't bore you with any more because there's not much more planted because it's a little early in the season, but we're getting there. But this is what I do when I'm not dying yarn. I grow my own food. I grow my own fiber, so it's cool. I bake my own bread, it's a cool little life. And it's all done on this property. So when you come into the yarn shop at Elm Park, you could know a little bit more about me.